So President Biden uh, today, he was sworn in and he's emphasizing unity in his first speech. To restore the soul and secure the future of America requires so much more than words. It requires the most elusive of all things. He always looks like he just smelled something, right, <laughs> when he's talking. He always looks like, oh, oh. And when he says restore the soul, I, I think he means uh, at a record store. I think that's what he's thinking about. <laughs> he's in a democracy. Unity. With Unity. We can do great things, important things. <laughs> we can right wrongs. We can put people to work in good jobs. We can teach our children in safe schools. Jeez. We can overcome the deadly virus. How about we can reward, reward work and rebuild the middle class and make health care secure for all. How? How are you going to do those things? They just, just say good things. We're going to make everybody handsome and tall and blonde and pretty. And everybody's going to have food and clothes and money. And we're going to make bring peace everywhere. How? I don't know. This is nuts. We can deliver racial justice and we can make America once again. The guy who wrote the crime bill. <laughs> Gee, oh the guy who wrote the, the guy who exp almost single-handedly exploded the prison population, giving us slave labor inside of our prison industry. This guy. He just said that. And his vice president helped him along. And his vice it. president helped him along. The leading force for good in the world. The leading. When in the fuck were we ever the leading force <laughs> for good in the world? Do, can, when, when was that? Uh, 1940? Come on, Mac. You know when that was the thing. That, <laughs> that time. You know the thing. So here's a guy. There's a guy who. Uh, a man who aligns with Boogaloo Boys. Who are the Boogaloo Boys? What is that? I don't even know what that is. Do you, Ron? I don't is that know like the that, Proud Boys? I I think Steph, look so. Up Boogaloo I'll look boys. up Boogaloo. I, my guess is they're Proud Boys who like to dance. I think they're yeah, they're probably b Proud Boys with rhythm. So this guy went to the state capitol in Michigan, and he gave this speech. Now, Ron, I want you to listen to this speech, and tell me how much of this you agree with. Because we're told these people are maniacs. Yes, they're loosely organized, far-right, anti-government, and extremist political movement in the United States, according to Wiki. Okay. So here's what he says. BLM, Antifa, Boogaloo, and right-wing militias, they are the antibodies, not the disease that is destroying our country. The so he included Antifa in that. Yeah, I, I mean, I... I... I think he said BLM, Antifa, and, and then he also said Boogaloo, Boogaloo and, and yeah. Proud Boys. Yeah, so let me listen to it again. BLM, Antifa, Boogaloo, and right-wing militias. Yes, he says BLM, Antifa, Boogaloo, and right-wing right militias are not the problem. That's what he's saying. Let's listen to it again. BLM, Antifa, Boogaloo, and right-wing militias, they are the antibodies, not the disease that is destroying our country. They are the antibodies, he says, not the disease destroying our country. The disease is a country run by two corrupt political parties that do not care about you. So deeply incestuous with corporations that they are indistinguishable from each other. A government that spent six months debating whether to give their own people $600, but only 24 hours to unanimously agree to give billions of dollars to foreign tyrannical governments and corporations. A government that has bombed villages overseas my entire life for my supposed safety here. This is a call for unity. For all of American people that realize the true threat against us to come together. For every mother mourning the ch or children that was killed by police. For every business crushed down by state lockdowns. For every broken soldier sent to fight wars that have no point. This is our last chance to avoid either a tyrannical civil a tyrannical government or a bloody and pointless civil war among American people who do not have that much against each other and have more in common than they realize. And a message to the government. We come in peace. We do not intend to commit violence. But I am pleading with you, with tears in my eyes and cracks in my voice, if you continue to oppress the American people, they will remain rational no longer. Thank you. What do you mean by that? So what's happening there is a right-wing militia guy reaching out to the left-wing 
people in BLM and Antifa saying we have more in common than our government wants us to think. Did you hear what he said? He said they can't give us 600. They could barely come up with $600 in a, in a whole year, but they can come up with billions and trillions of dollars for for multi uh, for international corporations and corrupt governments, foreign governments. We want to bring our soldiers home. I don't did what did any did he say anything there that you could disagree with, Ron? Yeah, I mean, in theme, I I think everything he's saying really just paints the picture of what's going on societally. I I don't. I don't know if this guy's with any particular group or if he's just a, a guy making a speech. I mean, I, I don't know who he is, but um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think he's right on that. It's like this is the system that's oppressing the American people that is, you know, putting us in these endless wars that has turned its back on everyone during a pandemic. And uh, this is the problem. And, you know, I mean, it just goes into that theme where it's like when stuff like this happens and, and we've been talking about stuff like this for four years. What happens when people are oppressed, when a system is completely broken and is thrown uh, working people over the boat? People turn to demagogues. People, um, you know, are desperate. People have nowhere to turn. And, and that's where our society is at. And the system is uh is unbroken the system continues and you know today you know you, you kind of saw a lot of that just going on today where, where you just had these these super wealthy elite people patting each other on the back you know you, you had I, I mean even and I, I watched a lot of the inauguration and it was it was pretty cringe throughout most of it I mean Lady Gaga had a pin on that looked like something out of the Hunger Games, which was very poetically appropriate, consider, you know, considering what's going on at the world at large. So. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that really captures the frustrations of what's really going on in our society. That's remarkable. I, I think that's really a remarkable piece of video. And of course, people will disparage that guy and they'll disparage. So what this does is scares the establishment. It scares the neoliberals. Because the last thing they want to see is the left and the right, the populist left and the populist right come together because they know it's over for them. And so they're that they're the ones trying to divide us. And we got to keep that in mind. So when Fred Hampton, now Chris Hedges came on our show and he knows a lot more about stuff than I do. And he said that uh, when they killed Fred Hampton was when Fred Hampton started working out to the working, reaching out and working with the racist working class whites. And as soon as they saw him doing that, that's when they killed him. That's according to Chris Hedges. That's what he said on this show. Well, th those speeches of his, Fred Hampton, that, that you can still find just on YouTube. I mean, it was incredible because, yeah, you look out, they would they would pan to the audience and you would see people of all different ages, all different races, all different backgrounds in that audience and you would listen to his words and they were incredibly powerful words. And, you know, another thing I think a lot of people often forget that, that, that I think is worth reiterating. He was 21 years old. Fred Hampton. 21 years old he was. I, I mean, it's I mean, it's so tragic and, and just heartbreaking, you know, what happened, of, uh, of course. But but it's also just I mean, it really uh, just humbles you like, like, wow, that guy was 21 doing that stuff. It's, it, it's just, um, incredible to just think of what he could have gone on to do had, had they not murdered him. Yeah. I mean, and all of them, MLK, Malcolm X, yeah. Bobby Kennedy, JFK, if they hadn't been murdered in the sixties, we'd have a much different country right now. Absolutely. Uh, that's remarkable. That's unbelievable. And that's what I've been saying. The populist left and the populist right have to come together to fight against the oligarchy. And then we can get back to fighting each other. I can't wait to get back to us fighting a bunch of left right issues. But the issues we're fighting over right now are not left right issues. It's us against them issues. So spending eight seven hundred and forty two billion dollars on war every year while people are under mountains of student debt, have no health care and we'll live paycheck to paycheck. That's not a left-right issue. That's a top-down. That's us-against-them issue. 
stopping the wars and investing that money back home. That's not a left right issue. An infrastructure building back America. That's not a left right issue. Trump promised it. Obama promised it. Biden promised it. None of them are fucking doing it. It's not a left right issue. It's them against us. So that's the thing that people, I think, are starting to catch on to. And that's what the corporate news doesn't want you to know, Ron. This is what they don't want people to know. This is what the, the, the corporate journalists from Vox and MSNBC and CNN, they don't want, and TYT, they don't want you to know this shit. They want to keep a divide in this country because that's what gets them clicks. What is CNN going to do now that Trump's out of office? They got to keep making you afraid. And they're going to make you afraid of these people. They're going to tell you they're terrorists. They do that. The last thing in the world they want is the populist left and the populist right to come together. Everything that guy said was true. I can't disagree with anything that guy said. Is he wearing a rainbow flag? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I, that's, that why, that's why like, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's a right wing militia guy. Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't know if he is either. I, I think he might just be a, a guy who's making a speech to everybody. Yeah, maybe that's a guy. I mean, he, he, he yeah. addressed every group. Right? Yeah, he addressed. Yeah. So maybe he's just but he certainly looks like a right wing militia guy. Uh, but he <laughs> he might just be a regular guy appealing to everybody. He might just be a dude with a beer, Jimmy. Well, he is wearing like cap. Isn't he wearing like army gear and stuff like that? It's hard to tell. I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I see the rainbow stuff. flag, but right. They, he's got some Looks camo. Like some paraphernalia. He's got some camo on and some stuff. But yeah, he yeah. does. He does have the pride flag there, right? That's what that is, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, he's probably just a dude, and he's probably just, he's, just and he's a dude spitting some truth, man. And he's wearing the maybe he's trying to do the thing where bring people together. Maybe he's actually that's how you bring people together. You say, hey, it isn't them, it's not Americans against Americans, it's us against the ruling elite. That's how you bring people together. Now, what Joe Biden was doing was just empty platitudes. That guy was actually saying stuff. Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you to join our premium program and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.